Hello. Hello. Children, ma'am. Hello. All right. So, you know, introducing DNA romance. This is a, a bit of a, a screen capture of what it looks like from the inside of DNA romance at this point in time, where we're still optimizing and improving the, the look and feel of the platform. Uh, it was originally set up by uh, a team of uh, three of us uh, co founders. And I'm just, uh, okay, so we've got. Uh, Master Judith Bossere, and uh, she was doing her internship at the Sword of Business School when I, when I first met her, actually. And I was working at, across, <laughs> and I was working across the road at the uh, you know at the Michael Smith Laboratories, which is uh, just behind the bookstore there. <laughs> and we also uh, partnered up with uh, with one of our colleagues, uh, Abhijit Pandari. Uh, who, who we also co-founded the business with. And uh, at the time, uh, you know, I'd been talking with Judith about the concept of chemistry and matchmaking. So the element of chemistry is typically only felt when two people get in a room together. And it's very biological. It relates to your sense of smell and how you register the other person's scent so if you find their scent to be very very pleasant smelling then there's science showing that you have a very different immune system to them uh, well if you have a very very similar immune system to them you'll you'll register their scent to be quite repulsive so at the time there, were, there was no matchmaking sites bringing this to to online dating so there was lots of mismatching going on with online dating and all three of us at the time were, were using different online dating platforms and we were getting mismatched. And, you know, so it was, it was you know, an obvious hole in, in the whole problem. And uh, so we incorporated the business in September 2014, which is quite a while ago. Um, and we started looking at the business idea and we actually put the, the business idea through the Lean Launchpad program, which is actually run uh, through the sort of business school. Uh, and entrepreneurship at UBC. Um, and so that was to validate, you know, the product market fit to see whether, you know, the, the people that we spoke to would be receptive of the concept of bringing, you know, the element of chemistry to online dating using your, your DNA. And uh, so anyway, that was, that was the start of DNA romance. And that's, uh, you know, we, we kicked it off with, with Judith myself and Abhijit, and we slowly sort of expanded the team. On the next slide, uh, I, I show, uh, you know, one of our advisors, uh, you probably might know Ian, he's a, a, a lecturer or a professor in the sort of business school, and he was also a, uh, one of the early um, partners you know, or early, you know, team members in PMC Sierra, which is a, is a chip maker. Uh, so he's advising us on, on the project. Uh, the early developer that we had on the project was Bernard Ebenu, so he was the instrumental in really making the, the back end functional and, and making DNA romance real. So I believe it was April 2016 that I started, I quit my job at UBC and started working full time um, with Bernard on, on developing the platform that would actually, you know, in, uh, accept people's DNA files uh, and, and match them. Um, we've also got uh, Dr. Carolyn Timms, who's a psychology researcher in Australia, and she's an early investor, but she's also uh, been instrumental in developing the personality uh, matchmaking algorithm that we have, which relies on the Myers-Briggs personality types. Uh, so online dating is, you know, a huge industry. Uh, you know, it, it's currently very popular in North America, um, but it's also popular all around the world. Um, and, you know, based on, on our calculations, we were targeting, you know, uh, about 3 million people in, in, you know, in the first five years to be uh, part of our, our forecasts. Uh, and we, you know, estimated that would be a very, very small percentage of the global uh, population of single people that we could target, uh, you know, over the next five years. And that's... Uh, really relying on the fact that, you know, online dating is becoming mainstream now. So, you know, one in, one in three people meets, one in three heterosexual couples meet online now. Um, and I even met my wife, who's actually our, our co-founder, online, um, you know, 
way back in in 2000 and, uh, 2000 and what, 12 it was that I met her. Uh, yeah, so, and, and when we met, we actually, we, we weren't comfortable with telling people that we met online. And we had the story that we met at the uh, Boulevard Cafe, which you, you probably know as well, which is, you know, so the shoppers drug mart at UBC. Uh, so, yeah, and, uh, you know, with, with homosexual couples, uh, you know, even you know, nearly 80% of those couples are meeting online now. So the taboo is gone. People are telling their friends that, yeah, we met online. And so, you know, it's, it's a very, it's the way, it's changed the way we meet, but it doesn't have the element of chemistry because you can't smell somebody through the computer screen. So you can't use that sense of chemistry. And so the online dating model is, you know, currently broken. It, it, it is incomplete. You know, it includes matchmaking based on people's appearance and includes matchmaking based on personality compatibility on some platforms, but not all. They really focus on, 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 on appearance. Um, so we bring the element of chemistry to online dating and we base this on a set of genes that, that correspond to your immune system and this set of genes have also been shown to play a role in attraction in, in humans, in, you know, in large uh, studies, but also in other vertebrates. And that's where I really got convinced that, you know, this was the right thing to be looking at because I was aware of studies that they'd uh, evaluated in birds and even salmon where matchmaking was based on the set of genes uh, known as the uh, major histocompatibility complex. And I think I've got some more slides on that. So, you know, to, to enter the online dating market, we're bringing the element of chemistry to the matchmaking process. Uh, therefore, you know, we're providing a more complete uh, or comprehensive form of matchmaking and, you know, causing less mismatches, which is is also a problem so what's the cost of a bad relationship and the genes that we're looking at are called the major histocompatibility complex and they correspond to proteins that are on the surface of your cells and they present you know e the pathogens to to your t cells and uh, so breakdown products of when your cells sort of break down these these uh, proteins are exuded in your sweat and you'll register the scent of somebody else if they have very uh, similar MHC proteins, then you'll find the smell to be really, really bad. And if they have very, very different MHC proteins, you'll find the smell to be very, very pleasant. And there's a number of these MHC genes that are all positioned on the end of chromosome six. Um, so we're focusing on you know, about 48 of these genes and 102 DNA markers that are positioned in these genes. And what we do is we've created a, um, you know, a, a chemistry compatibility rating that's based on this set of genes. And basically, if they have more different genes, we have a higher compatibility rating. And if they have more similar genes, they either don't see the person, which would uh, correspond to people that are siblings. For example, I've put my, my, my family through the, through the system and my sister, for example, I don't definitely do not see her on the, on the compatibility rate. She doesn't come up as a match um, because she shares very similar um, genes to me. Um, whereas somebody that's very, very different to you will have a high compatibility rating. And that's again, based on these, uh, you know, 102 DNA markers. And these markers are, are shared between many of the common uh, direct consumer DNA tests that you can buy on the market, which include include 23andMe and Ancestry.com and MyHeritage and um, Family Tree DNA and the list goes on. There's about eight different providers that will send you a, a DNA testing kit and you can, you can, you know, take the test at home and they'll provide you an Ancestry report from the comfort of your own home and they're now providing uh, medical reports as well. So, this concept of people doing DNA testing at home and getting information from that is becoming very popular. Um, and we're relying on people to, to already have DNA tests to be able to use the service. But we also do offer our own uh, DNA test if, if you're not comfortable or if you don't already have a DNA test. Um, so the other uh, compatibility rating we offer our customers is 
the personality compatibility rating, and that's based on the 16 different Myers-Briggs personality types. Many people know their, their Myers-Briggs type, so we're relying on, on that as a form of matchmaking that's also very transparent to people. Uh, we, we adopt, you know, so we, we hit the market in uh, September 2017. Uh, which corresponded to a lot, uh, you know, our appearance on, on Dragon's Den, uh, Canada. And since then, we've, you know, uh, been, we've tried online marketing. We're finding, you know, the most effective approach to getting customers, uh, you know, on the website and signing up is through SEO. So appearing, you know, first on the search engine when people are Googling, you know, terms like DNA matchmaking, genetic matchmaking you know, advanced matchmaking. Uh, we're getting cited in different research papers and that will be a key going forward to, you know, establishing IP um, in the company as well. Uh, we're working with uh, different genomics companies to establish different B2B uh, relationships, including, you know, companies that will do DNA testing for us, but also companies that we can partner with to, to send traffic um, both ways because we, we do rely on people having a DNA test. So, you know, other sites that, for example, offer nutritional reports or skincare reports based on DNA can also show our advertisements and, and we can send traffic their way and they can send traffic our way. Uh, we're working with smaller dating sites at the moment uh, to establish, uh, you know, whether we can offer them a service of uh, a matchmaking service for their customers, um, but also relationship counsellors to provide, uh, you know, couples compatibility reports. We've set up uh, an affiliate uh, marketing program within DNA Romance that allows people to, to join up and they get an affiliate link and they get a private dashboard that they can log in and it tracks uh, the referrals that they make using their affiliate link and uh, set up to track a 10% or, or higher commission uh, based on their referral. So if they send us a customer and they purchase a subscription, then the affiliate will get you know 10% of that, that purchase. Uh, uh, so as I mentioned, yeah, we're in the market. We have 6,000 users to date. Um, most of those users, are, well, 40% of those users are, are represented in, you know, 20 big cities across the world. It's mainly uh, in North America, including the US and Canada. Uh, we do have, have you know, one of the, some of these big cities are in Australia and the UK. We do have uh, users that are in Brazil, but not a huge amount at this, at this point in time. And that's possibly because of the, you know, it, it isn't written in Portuguese. So that's something we, we can definitely do in the, in the near future. Uh, it's mainly uh, younger people uh, between the ages of 22 to about 37 that are using DNA romance. Um, and in this case, it's, it's more female users that are, are serious about using it. So we sort of have two classes of customers, people that submit a DNA file and people that don't submit a DNA file and we can market to to try and sell a DNA test. And for those customers, we have a personality profile. But for people that submit the DNA profile, people that are more serious, uh, it's, it's, we've got more female users that are you know, taking that, that step of actually showing that they're serious about using it. And so the females are submitting their DNA files. So we have more females submitting their DNA files, but we have more males overall. Um, so that's not illustrated in that, uh, in that graph there. Uh, we have a bias because we ask the people's uh, personality types. We understand who our customers are. So we understand that our, most of the customers that are, that are coming to, this, to us at this point in time have just distinct personality types. They're mainly intuitive personality types. Uh, as you can see, the, the INTPs are overrepresented. So what I have in the gray bars are the, the personality types represented in the typical average population. And illustrated in the colors are the personality types that are present on the DNA Romance platform. So now you can see that we have a bias towards certain personality types 
and we have a bias to, to not being receptive to other personality types. So this definitely allows us to focus on, you know, the, the people that are, you know, appreciate the platform and, and are coming to us. So we know our, our evangelists, we know our customer, and we also know that we may need to develop different marketing strategies to reach some of these personality types that are obviously not receptive to our current landing page. So I think we need to build a, you know, a couple of separate landing pages to target these personality types and market towards them as well um, to get them using the platform. Uh, so we're, we're gaining momentum and we're gaining traction. Uh, as I mentioned, we've been, you know, launched since September, you know, 2017. And, and, you know, in the first year we had a, you know, quite a, quite a slow uh, trickle of growth. You know, we we're getting the blue line of customers that are submitting their DNA file and, in, you know, in the yellow we have total customers. And now, you know, we've seen a, a uh, you know, traction and, uh, since September last year. And that also corresponds to, you know, some changes that we made to the website. But also um, we, we, did, uh, we did pause our subscription model. So we did test a subscription model, uh, you know, between, uh, I believe it was January 2018 and uh, in September 2018. And, you know, during that uh, nine-month period, we, we saw about... Uh, about 70 people subscribe, so 70 people were willing to pay a, a monthly subscription. But following those people, we also found that they would, would, would unsubscribe after a couple of months and also be want to be removed from the platform. So, you know, not only did we have somewhat stale growth, but we're also experiencing churn in the customers that were, were willing to pay for the product. So we paused that in September, and now we're growing at a, at a pretty uh, significant rate since. Uh, and we are, you know, going to re-implement our subscription model again, but in a more sophisticated way with with a lot more thought. And that'll be, you know, basically uh, offering a, a yearly subscription um, to see, you know, more than fifty customers or for more than fifty matches. Um, so we're working through that at, at the moment. Uh, so, you know, as I mentioned, we, we've made money through uh, subscriptions and that's part of our, our revenue model and our forecasts. We sell uh, DNA testing kits. We have, uh, we have, you know, we've made a little bit of money out of showing advertisements, but with a small uh, group of users, it isn't a huge amount of money. We've received uh, commissions or we do receive commissions by making referrals to other DNA testing companies. Um, because once they already have, once they have the DNA test, they can come back to us and use our service. Um, but yeah, we are also offering um, our own DNA testing kits, and they are mainly ordered by local customers that um, meet us at, at events. So sometimes we have local dating events, and at those we sell a lot of the uh, the DNA testing kits. Uh, we're also talking to different. Uh, uh, reality TV shows or uh, TV producers about licensing our, our technology for use in uh, reality TV concepts and TV show concepts. So the warmest lead that we're following right now is with the Discovery Channel um, and we're trying to get a, uh, an executive producer agreement with them to sort of co-share in, in the development of a, of a TV concept that would compare uh, 30 um, different couples. Um, so that would include 10, uh, you know, known couples that have been together for a long time, uh, 10 uh, people that, you know, uh, 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 train wreck couples that, you know, just never got along or maybe they've got some, some serious issues to see whether maybe they don't have chemistry or don't have personality compatibility and 10 uh, sort of enemies from the office place. So that's the concept we're working through with the Discovery Channel. Uh, but we also have uh, warm leads with other TV producers and I get approached by uh, one a week at least. And um, the problem is is most of them want uh, exclusive rights on a, on a TV show. So once I sign with one of them, I'm going to be legally bound to working with that, uh, 
that producer for the next year at least. And so we do have a, a deal on the table from Verunia Entertainment um, and we have, are in conversation with, with, with about six other producers, but uh, I, I want the deal with Discovery Channel because I think that brings the most credibility to the, to the business going forward. So that's a little bit harder to secure. Um, so, okay, so this is the, the revenue projections uh, based on a subscription fee of $69 uh, per, per year, uh, DNA testing uh, uh, fee of $107 and raising ad revenue of uh, you know, two cents per customer per month. Uh, main expenses uh, are going to be, you know, sales and marketing, which is included here. Um, and salaries and wages. Um, so the the matchmaking landscape, we position ourselves as you know not only a, a niche uh, service, something that, that's different to what's currently available, a, a scientific matchmaking platform, but we also bring the element of chemistry to online dating, which is something that the the other matchmaking sites cannot cannot do. We also position ourselves, so, you know, we position ourselves in the, in the matchmaking landscape and the online dating landscape, but we also are in the direct-to-consumer DNA testing uh, space, which is a new field, but it's also becoming very popular. And, um, you know, very soon you might hear family members saying, oh, I bought you a DNA testing kit for Christmas. Uh, last year there were 4 million people that had DNA testing um, done at home. And this year, there's over 30 million people that already have DNA testing. So, you know, five times the total amount just this year. So the, the field's exploding, but we position ourselves in a, in a very, um, very, you know, uncompetitive landscape. Uh, we do have a plan for, for the next uh, 12 months. And that's around, you know, uh, movement in the areas, areas of, of genomics, and relationships, so we're having uh, matchmaking events that are centered around DNA, so we celebrated DNA Day, uh, we also celebrated Valentine's Day, we're making improvements to our dating platform, which is currently a web app, um, and we're also hoping to build, you know, Android and iPhone apps later in the year once we raise some money. We've got marketing efforts planned and we're, you know, we've got our affiliate program set up. We have been talking to, to local media um, and so we have appeared on the radio and different, different magazines. Uh, as I mentioned, we're in, in discussion with different reality TV uh, producers and we're hoping to have a, a series of shows that would come out uh, throughout the year. Uh, but we've got to, you know, fix on the, on the right producer that's going to give us the most credibility. We're improving our SEO every day, uh, ranking higher and higher on search engines. And we're also hoping to to refine our, our DNA test that we're looking at. So currently we're, our DNA tests, um, we're, we evaluate 720,000 markers in our DNA test. So it's a standard DNA test that we get. Um, from a, a genomics company. It's very affordable because it's a standard test, but it's also testing you know, uh, hundreds of thousands of markers more that we need, need to look at. So we're looking at refining those, those markers down to a smaller number and providing a, 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 a cheaper uh, DNA test. Uh, we will also look at, at predicting you know, phenotypes uh, based on, on DNA. So one of those phenotypes might include uh, blood type, which is very, uh, would be potentially important for the populations. Um, and one of our uh, business development people is looking into seeing whether there is a market for DNA romance in Korea and Japan, which there does appear to be. Uh, we also have, you know, a, a five-year vision in the uh, spaces of, of online dating, genomics, couples compatibility, and later on healthcare. Um, so, uh, in the, in the area of dating, we, you know, in the next five years, we hope to be not only a standalone website, um, but also a white label plug-in to, to other dating websites. So we don't want to hold 
all the IP for, for bringing chemistry to online dating. We want to license that IP to, to other dating sites so they have access to those chemistry predictions and they don't you know, need to go and create their own. Um, we're also you know, uh, hoping to, to have it, you know, drive a lot of our advertising through you know, novel TV, reality TV shows and movies. Um, in the areas of, of genomics, we'll be refining the DNA markers, you know, doing research studies to identify new markers that correspond to relationships, uh, refining our algorithms to, uh, you know, probably transition from mathematical algorithms to be more uh, machine learning and AI-based um, algorithms. And with this, we can also look at, um, you know, preventative health care as well, um, because we are looking at DNA and these DNA uh, reports, or, you know, raw DNA reports do contain a lot of healthcare-based markers. We can actually look at, you know, healthcare from a different angle, uh, which is preventing relationships uh, where, where people are both carrying the same, uh, the same severe heritable condition. Um, but again, that's, that's sort of slated for later in our, in our company's development when we have more time and resources to, to look at the ethical aspects of doing this sort of uh, testing and, and reporting as well. And then we're also, uh, you know, uh, working on couples, uh, providing couples compatibility reports uh, that could not only be uh, issued to couples in private, but also be used by, by couples counsellors and potentially used in a, in a legal setting. So if a couple's going through a divorce and they've got irreconcilable differences or maybe uh, you know, poor personality compatibility and poor chemistry also play a role in that. Um, we can also refer couples to, to MDs um, and we're you know, working with another company on a telegenomics platform that can connect you know, people that are concerned about their genomics with a, a medical practitioner. Uh, you know, as an investor, you'd be looking for when can you get your money back out of out of you know, out of DNA romance. So there's several opportunities for different liquidity events, and there's several examples of, of dating sites that you know have achieved liquidity at a at, you know very attractive valuations. So, for example, we could be acquired larger dating conglomerates. And we have an example where Plenty of Fish, which is a, a dating site that, that uh, was built uh, by a founder in Vancouver as well, uh, sold to Match.com for 575 million US dollars in 2015. Uh, you know, you could have liquidity events uh, where you know bigger institutions invest in DNA romance, and for example, uh, you know, little-known dating site Coffee Mix Bagels already you know have raised. $31 million by 2011. And the other option for you know, a different liquidity event might be an IPO. Um, so Match.com currently has a market cap of, of $12 billion. Uh, so you know, the public who are actually consuming and using this product may be a very, very good gauge for the valuation and uh, you know, drive it up. And so what we're seeking, you know, so, so far we've raised uh, over $100,000 from our family and friends. Uh, we have uh, some, a lot of our staff that are working for us at the moment, uh, working as a, as a check swap. So they're basically purchasing equity uh, in DNA romance for their time. Um, and we're currently raising a seed round. We are targeting you know, $500,000, but we are raising that in small batches of $100,000 uh, using a safe. But if you're you know, willing to fill a whole round of 100 k we could issue you a, a valued round um, and, and common shares with that. I guess I, I, you know, we're, we're, we're seeking advisors, um, but also you know, syndicating the round with, with other angel investors. And... Uh, request if you have any uh, questions about DNA romance, this is the best time to, to ask. Great. So what I like doing is to go back to the slide and make comments and questions so that we can discuss a little bit about your deck, your pitch, yes. and how uh, you could do uh, improvements 
that I saw right away on your pitch. So it's a way that Sounds I can good. help Thank you, you. Uh, and clarify some doubts also. Yes, yes. So Sounds good. Thank you. The slide that you brought here is the front page. I really like this slide because you bring some pictures. Usually, entrepreneurs don't present pictures on the first page, and I really recommend to do that because right away you can create connection with the investor. So here we already yes. see what's going on on your product. So you have your name, you have pictures of possible products, of possible clients, and those clients are happy or has uh, interesting pictures about their profile, which represents what they feel and what your product can provide to them. So it helps us yes. to understand right away what you're doing. So I really like this front page because you could summarize the idea of what you do and what you can do for your prospects and future clients. So I, I really like that. Okay. If I would suggest one more okay. thing here in this uh, slide would be one sentence that describe your purpose, your value proposition. So one sentence okay. describing your value proposition right away. I would have your brand, the pictures that represent your product, and one, one simple and effective statement that will give me everything that I need. Yes, yes. No, that sounds great. Good suggestion. So the second slide that you present, you present to your team. So it's a very important theme on your presentation. And I think it's good when presenting at first. I would prefer it in another sequence and afterwards I'm gonna say why. Okay. I know that few advisors recommend team first because it's the most important part of your presentation because at the end of the day investors will invest in your team, not much in your company when you are in a seed uh, investment, when you're requiring seeds investment, they look more to the people than to the business itself. So, but just providing your feedback on your team, okay. I would say that you could bring here more information about the results that each people has have achieved. So you as a CEO okay. and CTO, what do you have achieved? What, why should I invest in you? Because if I compare your startup with another startup and I compare the teams and the slide teams, I would say that we will have a CEO, a CTO, a CFO, a CMO. But why they are different? If you could bring here uh, two bullets maybe with the results that each member of the team has already achieved or could add to your startup it would be very clear effective, yes. direct to the point and you don't need to go into too much detail to each one of them because it requires time for you to talk about each one of them if you have it directly in your pitch deck it will be much more effective. Okay, that's a good point as well. I'll, I'll include some more detail about their, their achievements. Exactly. So the third one is the complement of the first one. If you look at yes, uh, yeah. if you look at the size of the letters, the font, the font in the slide number yes. two, it's very small. So you have a lot of blank space on your slide, so you could, in, you could make it bigger. It would be easier to okay. see. And this slide, same thing. 
I would add the main achieve achievement of them because, for example, Chris Leno. I don't know Chris Leno. I know that he is a corporate lawyer, but uh, yeah. Is he a good guy for you? I, I don't know. So if I don't know what they do, I don't know if they are yeah. good. Okay. Unless they are definitely they are more very well. well known. So if they are very yes. well known, you don't need because just to see the picture you already know. But if they are not, so you should put here include. And then you talk about the market. This slide is very good because you could bring the information about the TAM, the total addressable market. And here you bring a drop down of the funnel until the target that you have in three years. I really like this structure. However, in this slide particularly, uh, it's not clear what's the difference between the global term and the global term because they are the same. What's the difference? You know yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So it's global term. Uh, yeah, it, it, I, I probably um, I need to highlight it in a smaller number of words. It's global term using online dating uh, platforms opposed to global TAM that are just matchmaking using traditional methods. Exactly. And that was on a global, yeah. Just making sure that you have this subtitle, it will be enough here. And I like this like, I just okay. didn't like the sequence because this is not well positioned. I'm going to say mm -hmm. why in a while also. Okay. Uh, but let's move to the next slide. Now you talk about the characteristics of the market, which is important. However, it's not well positioned as well. Go to the next slide. Yeah. Current online date model. Go to the next slide. We bring chemistry to online dating using DNA. Opposites attract. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the sequence of your slides. And I'm going to pitch for you and you will see how it looks. Okay. So we are talking about the slides number one to seven. I will come up with some numbers because I don't know the numbers exactly. But so I'm going to make up some numbers, but just to make you see how I would pitch the first part of your presentation. Okay. Okay. okay Do you so want me to change to slide one? Yes. Go to the slide one. We are DNA Romans. We are the platform to put together people that was born to meet each other and still don't know. We have Paul and Paul. Paul is looking for a girl that looks like him, but not looks like him as with the same characteristics because we see in the market with people with the same characteristics. Uh, are not very well, so the probability of them get divorced or not get too well in a relationship is high. So they need to, he needs to find a better way to find the girl of his life. And what would be the what what he does today? So he enters in a platform like Tinder and he swaps some photos and see some girls and try to uh, ping them, ping her and ping their, them and so the probability of them get together and have a long relationship is very low. Why? Because they don't analyze the compatibility of their genes and what to do? We do exactly this. So our solution is to provide people like Paul 
to met Jennifer, who is like who would like to get in a relationship and have a better connection. And we do it in the best way that we can and the best way of the market today. Because the other companies that they use now, they don't consider what really matters. And what really matters? Genes compatibility. But Paul and Jennifer, they are not alone. They are people who has the same characteristics of 20% of people that are in their age. And it represents now people that are single and they are looking for relationships. 80% of the marketing and they are doing it online. So it's a perfect possibility for us to include the matchmaking uh, apps or websites or tools to connect them with the genes and DNA analysis, which is exactly what we are proposing now. What I did here, I started with a first page which brings you the name of the company, what the company does, and the personas that might be your clients in the future. And I tell you a story which is very effective to make the investors know exactly what you're doing, exactly what people are facing, what are their difficulties and their needs. So you are yeah. very effective right away, tell a story, create a connection and boom, make the investors are in your business. Okay, yeah, that's, a, that's, why that's that think. is the right strategy. That's why I don't like to present the team at first. Because yeah, when you because it breaks it. Yeah, exactly. When you present your first page, uh, it already creates a connection. And the next slide, you need to talk about Paul, you need to talk about Jennifer, you need to talk about a persona that has a problem yeah. and you have a solution to address. That's right, 100%. After telling the story of Paul and Jennifer and saying that they are not to, they are not alone, you present the slide uh, five and six. Yeah, the market and then yeah, because Paul and the Jennifer, number of people. Not alone. So we have, I think, the number five. It's better to start with number five because it's more specific and it's talk about the persona. Okay. So talk about yes, yes, so yes. Let's go to the slide five. Just me to see what's going on there. Okay, so you can you can talk about Paul and Jennifer, but you can also talk about Paul and John, which the which the market is growing in a higher rate, or they are more online, or they are more on their using those tools, because. It's difficult for them to identify people uh, that are homosexual in the society. I don't know. I, I don't know about their problem, but you need to understand. And then you talk about the personality and the characteristics and what are their needs in the day-to-day -day routine. And then you say, okay, so we have this uh, heterosexual couples uh, growing and the homosexual couples growing as well. So the total market is this one, slide four. So that's right. Yeah. The flow of your presentation is broken. You are talking about mm -hmm. each topics individually, but you don't talk, you don't uh, have a story here. That's no, good. Good suggestion. It's better, much better the way you, you mentioned it. So going to the slide number seven, yeah, because you talk about the current model by telling the story of Paul, right? Yes. So you don't need the slide number six. You need to tell the story of your persona. And then when you talk about your product and how you solve the problem, uh, include the functionalities of your product considering the Paul's vision 
or the Jennifer's vision, how they are going to use it. And then you bring your solution, which is this slide, in the story. And then make the investors understand exactly what you're doing, exactly how it would be used. And then when they understand that, if you think it's necessary, you bring more details into it. So now that you talk about the chemistry and how it works in more details, it has to be after the story of John and Jennifer when you talk about the solution, how they would use it. Yeah, yeah. So the intention was that this is the you know the current set of online dating uh, parameters, which don't include chemistry, it only includes the element of, of appearance and exactly. personality. Exactly. Yeah. And it usually complements this slide here, which you know is, is the what we differ, you know, what we bring to online dating is this element of chemistry which is currently not included in any model. And, you know, we are able to achieve uh, bringing chemistry to online dating using your, your DNA by targeting a set of genes that are known to be involved in relationships. Exactly. And then you go to the slide 9. When you talk about the details. And one, one tip here. If you are going to pitch for three minutes, for three minutes, you don't need to go into the it's too long, yeah. of the product details and the product characteristics. Okay. If you only okay. tell, uh, tell the story of John and Jennifer, it will be enough to present your, their needs and your solution. Okay. And then you end saying that they are not alone and there is a huge market, more than X number of people in those regions, if you have this information, or, and then you present the, exactly, the slide. So it's almost that one. Exactly. Slide number 10 now. You still talk about the characteristics. So that's not, not necessary as well. Yeah. But it's, it's interesting. So just out of curiosity, how it works, we target 48 MHC genes. And in chromosome 6, we have a specific part that makes us being more connected with other people is that is that right yep. that is correct yeah very interesting it is it's fascinating yes do you have examples on people you mentioned that you're gonna uh, no after that I, i'm gonna talk about this after that it's only okay. so let's continue here so it's okay. 11 web app chemistry score. What does it mean? It means that 92% of the combination of DNA that Adriana has is compatible with John, for example. Okay. So if you look at the distribution of compatibility, you know, it would range between 1% compatible and 100% compatible. Uh, so Adriana is sort of in the 92nd percentile of compatibility with, you know, the person who's looking at, at her profile. Which means that if I was looking to Adriana, uh, my genes would have some difference and because of this difference I'm 92% compatible or likely to yeah it's not clear for me yeah it, it's it's a, like we we don't say exactly how it's working but I mean 
the it, it works in the direction of the higher the compatibility, the more the more uh, chemistry you should have or, or forecasted to have with Adriana. If you have sixty percent uh, compatibility with Adriana, you're probably not going to experience chemistry with her. Uh, the couples that we've tested, so we've tested known couples, and they range in between you know eighty four percent and a hundred percent. But the algorithm is certainly, you know, it, there's, there's a lot of opportunity to refine it and improve it, you know, with time and known references. So in future, I'd like to carry out research studies that include known couples that have been together for a long time and actually establish, you know, what is the, the benchmark for, you know, uh, successful couples versus unsuccessful couples. This study have not been conducted yet? Uh, there hasn't been a study that, that establishes the benchmark itself. There have been studies that have demonstrated the, you know, the relationship between smell and attraction in relationships and even uh, second date preference. So they found that you know, this element of chemistry is just as important as personality attributes as in predicting a second date. Uh, or preference of a second date, but there's 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 a whole lot of opportunity to to look at it in more detail, um, especially through sequencing of, of these regions. So the ability to discover new DNA markers and tie them to relationships, and then once we do that, then there would be an opportunity to to uh, patent uh, the combinations of markers and how they would be used in in an algorithm. Right now, a lot of the DNA markers are already known. They've already been reported, which is good. We get to use them. They're already in, in common uh, DNA tests, uh, but they've already been shown to play a role in relationships. So where, you know, what we've built is, you know, a way that everyday people can access the technology and the information. But right now, you know, we haven't got, you know, IP that we can, we can patent. We've got IP that we keep a trade secret. So if you're comparing Adriana with Denise, and Denise has 65 on the, on the chemistry compatibility score, then you might actually find Denise's smell to be very repulsive. Whereas Adriana, because she's 92% compatible, there's a good chance when you meet her in person that you're going to find her scent very pleasant. But also, you know, we're providing you a personality compatibility score. Uh, and personality compatibility score relates to, you know, are you going to get along with, with Adriana um, in terms of her personality? Are you going to conflict um, because your personalities are so different? Uh, so this score is also higher if Adriana shares a more compatible personality type to yours and it's lower if Adriana, you know, has an incompatible personality type. And typically incompatible personality types are the most, you know, are, are very, very different personality, different personalities. So, you know, the more similar your personality is with somebody else, then the, the more compatible you would be if you're more similar in personality. The more different your personality is, are, the less compatible um, you, you are as a couple. If you can understand each other, you're poss possibly a better couple but it's going to lead to more conflict because you're more different and you differ on so many different points of view. Yeah, because this is one thing that calls my attention because uh, to understand the number. Because here mm -hmm. I'm speciali specializing in big data and here we have a yes. model that it's exactly uh, made to understand genes characteristics and yes i mean this, this this personality is not not based on genes this is psychology yes and i think i will i was saying that the mod the big data model that i i'm specializing is focused on genes but they are applicable for other areas as well and it's very important here to bring a lot of data for the model in order to understand what are the matches that last longer? Yes, yes. Ah, actually, one question from my understanding. I understood that 
DNA romance objective is to connect couples for long relationships. Yes. Okay. One thing that you need to have going forward is the is bringing data, collect data from couples that has or that have long relationships and couples that broke up really fast and try to get those information to the model and make them learn yeah. with those informations and then create a model based on what really happens. Exactly, exactly. So I have some references. You are planning to do that as next steps, right? Exactly, that'll generate IP for the business. Right now the model is, is coded on the understanding that, that opposites attract at this set of genes that we're looking at. So we, you know, we haven't built in the, the ability to discover new genes that may be affecting relationships and those new genes may not operate under the same rules or the same laws that the, the MHC genes operate. We're, we're targeting the MHC genes because they've been studied very well in humans and, and other vertebrates and we know that, that opposites attract so there isn't... Um, you know, you don't necessarily need the same reference standards um, in that, but yeah, it, it would help calibrate it to say, yeah. this is the benchmark for a successful couple. Anything lower, uh, we don't show you um, because that is you know, a relationship that's not going to work. Okay, so we okay. talked about market adoption. I would change the name of this slide because it's not okay. marketing adoption. I think it's, it could be called marketing and a subtitle of this marketing is customer acquisition. Okay, that's it. Because market adoption, when I read market adoption, I would expect it to see in this slide how people are respond to your, your ads, how they are respond to your research, like the result of the marketing effort is the marketing adoption, is the okay. market adoption. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, definitely, uh, yeah, customer acquisition is the, the right term there. Exactly. And then I, I see a lot of things here in this slide, but I can't see exactly what you're doing because you are, you are talking about a lot of things. I don't know what's implemented, what is planned, what's the result of each one of them, if they are if they are impacting your prospects in a good way, if not, I think this slide should change. I mean, the purpose was to run through all of the different lead magnets that we have and the different ways that customers are, are finding DNA romance. And, you know, that, I guess that was my way of, you know, hitting all of the, the bullet points of, you know, that, you know, people are finding us in the search engine that research papers are, you know, citing us and therefore, you know, people are reading research papers and going, oh, that's a, that's a concept. It's been, you know, it's somewhat credible because there's a, a journal in, you know, Nature Biotechnology or, you know, a scientific research journal that's citing it. Um, you know, our relationships with uh, genomics companies. So it was a way of trying to run through the checklist, but maybe you have a, a suggestion of how to present this a bit better. Yes, I think... You could either bring more detail on each one of them in an easier way to see. Okay. Or focus only on the main that you are doing and then you mention that you are planning to include the other ones. Because as at least what I can see from your company, you're, you don't have uh, the amount of people that will do everything 
at the same time. So probably you have to choose some of them to work on and then move to other, but then you need to evaluate the results of each strategy. So you need to allocate people to do each one of them. Clearly, you can't do everything at once. And it's not clear what you are focusing right now, what you plan to, to focus, because you need to test everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we've, we've tried online marketing. We've found that it, it, it doesn't have any return on investment. Where it, it's sort of a bottomless hit. Uh, we've had trouble with, with online marketing as well because we're in the dating space. So Facebook doesn't allow us to advertise on Facebook because we're a competitive uh, site and we've had to go through the process of being approved four times already um, and then you know once we stop our advertisements then we have to go through the process again um, as I mentioned we have been cited in, in, in I have one idea sorry. for you to be able to use Facebook instead of promoting yes. DNA as a product try to promote one specialist that talk about matching other people through personality or through genetics and then you start to to talk about tips about cases about people stories how they could get together what they need to consider and then when you have uh, an inbound marketing strategy in place, you can use all the leads that it generated to your email marketing, to your WhatsApp strategy, to your messaging strategy. And then at this moment, when you capture the lead, you are going to promote DNA romance. So it's one step more, but it's a very effective way because a lot of, lot of people are looking for love advices, how to find the woman of your life, how to find a man of your life, how to uh, get that girl that you wanted. And so if you create a channel that is based on those topics, you get a lot of audience yeah. in a cheaper way and then once you have, you get the audience boom you promote yeah that's a that's a good suggestion as well i'll, I'll um you know, follow that that angle of uh, on social media you know, it's, it's more having yeah you know valuable content for the audience opposed to spam the content where you're kind of forcing it on them exactly and facebook will love to receive this kind of ads Okay. Yeah, I'll try it. I mean, it's a uh, can't guarantee they'll let us through, but because uh, we've had so much trouble with them in the past. And uh, as I mentioned, we had uh, we've had the dating events, and in on you know for the dating events, I've collaborated with local matchmakers um, to sort of co-host the events. And when we've had the events, all the other matchmakers have also had trouble uh, using Facebook for advertising. And their businesses are, are not exactly online matchmaking. They might be personalized matchmakers, but they've also voiced the, the same concern that, that Facebook isn't allowing them to, to advertise. Um, because uh, right right in this country, uh, uh, Facebook does have a dating service. So they're testing it here in Canada, and we offer a competing, uh, a competing service to them. One thing that uh, it's missing here in your presentation is exactly uh, the competitive landscape considering the characteristics of the competitors. When you go down some slides, you present the competition there. Where Facebook is playing? Sorry, fa Facebook is operating uh, matchmaking in, uh, I believe it's Colombia and Canada at the moment. So I think they're optimizing it here first before they launch it globally. But they are playing in uh, picture and personality compatibility. Yes. 
So it's mainly common interests. Do you have common interests with these people? And then they show you their pictures. So it's not a super sophisticated site, but it's, uh, you know, they're, they're present here. Mm -hmm. And so what we're, we're illustrating is most of the sites are, you know, successful in, you know, showing people pictures and matchmaking based on appearance. Uh, personality is a, um, is an attribute of, you know, online dating and, you know, some sites like eHarmony are successful because of personality matchmaking, but nobody looks at the element of chemistry and that's the problem is it's been completely overlooked, but it's a very important part of compatibility and, uh, you know, that's what we bring to the, the whole uh, industry or the whole, you know, online dating sector. And then the next slide sort of illustrates that we also fit into a, another sector or industry, which is direct-to-consumer DNA tests. And uh, you know, in that in that area, it's you know, it's not crowded at all. Um, we're the only ones offering you know, DNA-based dating services that are based on uh, direct-to-consumer DNA tests. So once you have your 23andMe report. Uh, you can also get some value out of our uh, DNA analysis for relationship compatibility. Yeah, it's another product line, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the DNA test itself is another product line, but it also is a prerequisite almost for using our service because um, that was our starting point is you, you need the DNA test for the forecast of chemistry. And really, uh, we're only offering personality compatibility as a value add, but it's also a, um, a lead magnet as such to, to bring people in for, uh, uh, you know, selling them a DNA testing kit and, and uh, more sophisticated matchmaking based on, on chemistry. Yeah, personally, if I understand, don't like this strategy. Why? Because you're at the beginning of your operation. If you choose mm -hmm both you have to create two structures to build at the same time you need to market differently you have different clients you need to have different value proposition i understand that they are complementary but i think that the stage that you are you shouldn't do both you should consider one which best market which have the bigger market highest possibility of uh, doing great but not choose both at the same moment my personal opinion i would make your business much more difficult and much less able to succeed uh, in the short term you take a lot of time, you need a lot of money to develop both things, you're not going to focus, you're going to spread your attention. I wouldn't suggest that. Uh, we haven't set up a lab ourselves. Uh, the, the process that we sorted out is a, a partnership with one of the labs down here on the, uh, the left-hand side of the screen, Family Tree DNA, the, the background's highlighted in green. This lab uh, process, you know, millions of, of DNA samples every year, and we have an agreement with them where we've prepaid for a number of samples, and they've sent us the basic building blocks for the DNA testing kit, and then we've put our own branding around that. So, uh, you know, the customer will do the DNA test at home or order the DNA test through us. Uh, we send them the kit, and then the kit, they post the kit back to the lab um, and then the lab will process that in a timely manner. They process that, you know, within a couple of weeks of receiving the sample. And then the, the data automatically gets dropped in a, uh, in a, a Amazon cloud folder that we have. And then that goes into our system. So we've, we've actually got the pipeline, uh, sorted out and, and, and working. Uh, yeah, and that said, you know, we're not doing the DNA testing ourselves. So we're not having to wait for 100 samples to do a batch. Those samples go to the lab. We're, we're not doing that. And then the data comes into our folder. So we're not biting off having to have a technician on hand to be, you know, uh, you know pulling on, opening envelope 
scripts and, and put, you know, processing one sample at a time. That's already handed over to a lab that routinely does the sample processing that's already credible in, in the field. I have spoken I have spoken to people who uh, well other potential investors who said that that was a, a bit of a risk because you know this company's seeing how many samples that we've got going through and they could you know probably jump on the um, the opportunity once they see that we're getting you know 10,000 samples a week a week or something like that coming through then maybe they'd build a, a competitive service that was the other investors concern I don't I don't share that concern um, and right now it's really uh, um, we're not getting the majority of our business through that channel. Um, it's more um, maybe two or three percent of our business of our customers are ordering a DNA test. Ninety-seven percent of our customers already have a DNA test through one of the other providers. And on the screen here, we have you know Ancestry DNA, My Heritage, Family Tree DNA, uh, Twenty Three and Me. Uh, there's another company that, that's operating in the same city as us in Vancouver, uh, GenXis, and they offer DNA testing for um, reports on pharmaceutical compatibility. So your doctor prescribes you a drug. There might be five different options uh, for you know, the drugs that might be prescribed for your condition. Their reports would help you decide on which medications to, to take. Um, the good thing about the report that we get from Family Tree DNA is it does have 720,000 data points, which provides an opportunity for us to, to partner um, with other companies to bundle our DNA tests and for, you know, for a customer to get more value out of it. So for example, we could work on B2B partnerships with GenXis and for example, DNA Fit and you know, sell a DNA test that would include the DNA romance matchmaking as well as a GenXis report, as well as a DNA Fit report. So the realm of offering DNA tests, you know, it, it does provide value and, and, a, and a lead magnet to bring in new customers that we might not be able to get otherwise. Right. And in future, I see a lot of value in, in, you know, in sequencing that section of chromosome 6. So I know that you know DNA testing will get cheaper in future. It's um, come down significantly since we started the business, and I do foresee that you know in five years' time you'd probably be able to you know do sequencing on your on your smartphone on your iPhone. At least your doctor will have an iPhone that can do it. Yeah. So you mentioned here that we you have already users. DNA romance, right? Yes. How many? We've got a, a nearly six thousand. Six. Six thousand. Okay. And how much they pay for being in the platform? So right now they're not paying. We had about seventy that paid ten dollars. Um, and we're, we're, we're planning to re-implement the revenue model uh, based on a $69 yearly fee. And, you know, we're, we're currently building that out. So it's, it should be user-friendly before we, you know, deploy it to production. I'm not sure about your revenue model. So it'll be, it'll be based on a subscription, a subscription model. Yeah, right now I'm it's, it's sure paused. But we'll go. We'll we'll talk about this later. So this is live. Yeah. So it's not very. Useful. It's a freemium. This is like forty percent of users in twenty cities. Yes. Why? Okay. It doesn't matter. It's more to illustrate that there there are a couple. Of, you know, like cities that people know, especially for North American investors, they want to see that. You know, it's predominantly in the U.S. They want to see that there's a, there's a large base of, of U.S. customers. Yeah, okay. That's not important for for investors that are global, like like ourselves. So, but something I've, I've heard from American investors, they want to know how many American customers are, are using the, the product. Okay, it's a very good, interesting information that you're providing here. You have more female users than male, right? For DNA. 
the ones that are serious. So we've got sort of two classes of users, people who submit DNA and people who don't submit DNA, people who have only got a personality match. In this case, I'm only presenting users that have DNA, have submitted a DNA sample. How many have provided DNA? Uh, it would be a bit over two thirds. So there's about, about three and a half, four thousand people that have uh, DNA. More than six so not, not all. Your database. Yeah. Okay. And this slide, I think uh, this is. The next slide. Okay. Uh, yeah, this information I think you should skip. I didn't see too much value okay. on slide 15. Okay. But, yeah. For present to an investor, you don't need one slide to say that. And it's not that difference. This slide in inter is interesting because yes. it seems that do you, do you conduct the personality test in the app or you just ask for them to include what they are? Yes. So in this case, these results are based on asking them the results uh, of their, their personality type. Uh, we do have a questionnaire that we're currently also building into the platform to be able to provide them a, 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 a personality type if they don't know. Okay. Because what's happening here clearly is that they are lying. They are clearly lying or... Oh, you think they're lying? Yes, I think they are lying. Or the, you are Why is that? Because of the percentage of uh, the population with the information. Like, there is a, a amount of people that are ESTJ, a considerable number of people. And you are just getting yeah. this amount. It's very strange. Yeah. It doesn't seem well, that you are attracting the amount of people different. The profile of the people that you are attracting is different from the population, the total population. It's statistically. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's bias. Yeah, yes. yeah. I mean, if you look at it, the, the, the people with N, it's the second letter, the intuitive people, opposed to the sensing people. 80% of the users are intuitive. There's, I mean, there's a clear preference based on personality type for, for the platform. Um, and, and if you look at the colors, uh, so it's replicated for male and female. So, I mean, these are sort of two separate populations, but the preference of these personality types for using DNA romance is the same. I think it's, uh, I think it's fascinating, but it's, uh, <laughs> and I think there is some value in the information here. It's, uh, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be curious to learn of any biases there, but I think it's, uh, it's somewhat of a, like, I mean, I'm just asking them the personality and I'm reading, reading the results that we're getting and it kind of makes sense because, I mean, the personality types that are showing a, a high frequency on the platform are personality types that tend to be scientifically minded and even, you know, so we have a, a bias towards INTPs and INTJs. So these are introverted people that tend to be scientists. And, uh, you know, that would be the, the people that would understand the concept of DNA matchmaking and, and have that appeal to them. Yeah. Whereas, you know, the, you can see that the bias, uh, you know, for the ESTJ, um, so these are extroverted people that they're, they're, you know, they're not intuitive, they're sensing people. So they, you know, they, they, they connect well with other people. They probably don't need to use online data in the first place because they don't have any problem meeting, meeting other people. Yeah. But there's uh, certainly probably some biases in here that, we, that we've, we're overlooking, but there's a lot of meaning in the data as well. Yeah. Another thing that I would suggest you to do is to include the source of the information here. 
Um, new users each month it's good uh, it's good to present this information however I would suggest you one thing here instead okay. of bringing the number of users because the number of users are not very big I would suggest you yeah. to include percentage of growth. Okay. Because when That's you have clear. It, and then we are going to talk about the business model now, the, the revenue recognition and the revenue generation. Yes. I see your market as a market where you need to have a lot of users. You need to have yeah. a lot of people using your app. If you start charging them, you are not going to get them. So that's why I said that I don't think premium subscription would be the best approach. Uh, okay. So we were, we were thinking it's freemium as such. So, you know, they, they have a good user experience without paying. But there's also the op option to pay and get, you know, more, more features out of the product. Yeah, it's an alternative because you need to increase your client base. This is your yeah. priority number one. You need to include goals, daily goals, I would say, to increase the number of users. The success of your company is based on the number of users you're going to get. That's right, yeah. 100%. Uh, um, so I wouldn't agree with charging customers with no freemium package. And still, I'm still concerned about the free the premium subscription uh, I see the value I think few people will pay but it couldn't be a barrier for people to go into the platform for example if you provide them with a freemium subscription but they are not satisfied with the service they will leave however that's right that's so we've got to make sure they're satisfied but yeah, however, what's the big difference between Tinder and your value proposition? They are not only for long relationships. They People use Tinder for casual relationships, which make them stay in the platform longer. When people stay in your platform, it means that your platform has not helped her or him yet because when you That's help right, him yeah. or her they will leave i leave because yeah. they will not need anymore so you need That's to right. think that you are going to attract clients and if you have this client for a long period on your platform you are not doing a good job Yes, that's, that's correct. So this is a very sensitive or sensible market. Yeah, it's a difficult market. I mean, the churn, churn rate, the amount of customers leaving versus the amount of customers that are coming is very difficult to deal with. And uh, it's, it's become an increasing problem in recent times because we've automated the, the way people can depart the platform. So we've provided an option um, in the settings area saying if you want to remove your platform, uh, remove your profile or delete your profile, just click here. And since we engaged that feature, you know, we were seeing, you know, the churn rate, or the real churn rate, um, you know, smack us in the face. So, uh, you know, that's, that's, a constant thing that I'm looking at is, is, you know, how many customers leaving versus how many customers that are, you know, coming onto the platform every day. So you need to rethink that. What can you do to make them 
stay in the platform. I don't have this this answer. That's right that. Now. That's partially why we're um, changing to a yearly a yearly subscription, opposed to a monthly subscription, um, because you know, like if you're getting billed every month. You're not going to want to see that bill come in every month. Whereas if you pay once uh, for the year, then you get to enjoy the product for the for the next year, and then there's very little uh, reason to 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 remove your yourself because you've already paid for it. Yeah, but if in the next month you find the girl that you wanted, you are going to have. Well, that's a good thing. You're not going to use, so it's. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, I don't know. We, we need to offer a reward that if they give us a testimonial for that meeting, then we'll, we'll buy their wedding cake. Yeah, it's a good, good, good strategy, but still, you need to attract people and then they will leave. Yeah. Yeah, and hopefully, so we need to have, you know, a reward for the exit, uh, where they're giving a testimonial, um, you know, saying that they did find their match on DNA Romance when they leave, and then uh, if they can tell their friends about that, then that would bring more, more yeah, people to the, to the service. Strategy, but they wouldn't need to stay in the platform, just to get the money. That's because right. You need to build... Uh, completely different features on our app just to work with the referrals because they need to have their page to control their sales. Uh, That's right. So we we have a, a an affiliate program set up called a, it's a piece of affiliate software installed and it's called the IDEV affiliate program and it's set up to to provide the affiliates a tracking link. We have 16 affiliates that are using the software, but the problem is right now, because we haven't got the revenue model engaged, they're not getting a, a commission for their referrals, but they can see all the referrals that they're making. And when, when those people do make a purchase, they see it on their dashboard. So think about it. What can you do yeah. related to your revenue stream to make money, make people happy, and make everybody wins. Yeah. So the other revenue streams, sell DNA testing kits. Yes, but you have low margin on that, right? Because you're gonna buy from one and sell to other and you're going to be an intermediator small margin here yeah and his hand yeah you need to have a huge database that has to access your platform in a daily basis which i don't know if it's gonna happen tinder if a guy wants a girl to for this weekend he will access Tinder. Uh, if he wants another girl to the next next weekend, he will enter in Tinder. However, if I was able to do or to conduct a test, a blood test, a DNA test, I don't want to search for the person. I, my expectation is that the tool will provide the best match that I can have. I wouldn't have to access to change the pictures and see if it matches or not. I expected to receive the people who match with me directly. And then I will enter in the app one time, one shot, see the options and say, oh, okay, so I have eight possibilities here. So I'm gonna talk to with this eight. After this eight people, maybe if they are not good enough, it will happen two things. Or I will not believe in the two because 
out of eight possibilities, I didn't find one good one. Or I will enter again in the next week and see if one additional people enter, one additional girl enter in the platform and if it's a match or not. Or I'm gonna stay with my app closed and wait to be notified when a girl match with me. But I wouldn't look for as I would look for girls in Tinder for the weekend. You know what I mean? So the advertising Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, yeah it's gonna be our problem is, you know, trying to compete with well established dating sites like Tinder. And that's uh, that's partially why I've mentioned that you know in the future I do see us really um, positioned as a plugin, as a SaaS plugin to some of these other dating sites, uh, setting up in a romance as a standalone site. Initially, uh, we had to do this because we also had to demonstrate that we have a product and we can we can do DNA based matchmaking. Um, so by doing this it does offer the, the path to have that B2B service where we're offering a, a SaaS plugin to some of, to a Tinder that could actually reach a, a larger population of people. Otherwise, it's, it is a, a much tougher battle to grow DNA Romance as an independent website that's going to be a competitor for, for Tinder that has you know, millions and millions of users. It's even harder when you're offering, you know, when you have a prerequisite of, of a DNA test, uh, you know, which is, you know, only a small fraction of the population have this. Yeah. Now I think you have a market. Because when you are a plug-in, I think it makes more sense than you have, than you have to compete with Tinder directly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, but it's it's demonstrating that we've got a product that that they could use, and we've got an avenue to to integrate with them. And so that's why we're working with smaller dating sites at the moment to see what value we can offer them in uh, both terms of couples compatibility reports and you know the possibility of a SaaS plugin or a white label service that they can use for their businesses, and we can license that to them. I think you have a better product market fit this way. And then you, yeah. could, you could focus on being a DNA test lab. Because then you will be a provider of those things for the platforms that already exist. I think that it might be a good idea or a greater idea. And another thing in order to make this strategy works is the reliability of your model. If you if you are not correct in your algorithms that bring the results that put people together for a long period of time, yeah. it's, it, it, it's dangerous. So be careful with that. Hey. In, the, in the short term, yeah. you won't have the ability to prove that your system works because you don't have testimonial of the long-term relationship. Maybe you have testimonials of the relationships that are formed recently by your app, but it's a beginning. And then try to keep track of this couple and then put it on your database and understand what's happening and then uh, recycle your algorithms. And the exactly, have some feedback of the, yeah. the standards. And more than that, you need to collect blood, blood from couples that has a long relationship, that has broken, that all kinds of people, probably you need to pay them to provide, to help you with those information and those bloods. And That's where we, we're hoping to work with uh, relationship counselors and provide uh, couples compatibility reports. Um, 
so the relationship counselors would bring bring those the people interested in such a service yeah another thing that i would suggest to you it's one thing that, I, that it's happening right now here in brazil uh, it's used by lawyer firms that help couples to get divorced so they use this model to predict which couple has more probability of being divorced so that they can act proactively and talk to them and see okay so if you need our servers we are a couple we can help you on legal services we can help you on registration and eventually if something goes wrong we can also help you in divorce but they know that mm -hmm. the probability of the couple is higher to get divorced than other couples because of the data big data model that uh, is developed so it's another sector yeah, that yeah. might be now we could uh, we could even help you with that okay so talking about your five years vision uh, this slide is this slide in the slide before is very populated it's kind of mixing a lot of things a lot of different things I wouldn't present it as it is right now I use I okay. used to use this, this slide number 22 when I was presenting big projects for big companies when I was executive of one of the main consulting firms of the world. But it's a specific presentation with uh, executives that get into details. If we present it for CEOs, for example, I wouldn't use this this slide with too much details. I would have to reduce the amount of information and make only the most important points available on this slide. So, uh, when you are presenting for investors, this slide is too much. I I see what you are trying to present. It's important to present, but it's too much. It's complicated to see. Um, the slides 22 and then 23, the colors are not very well uh, explained. It's not easy to understand what represents which color. You know, like uh, we have here uh, green, we have here, uh, I don't know which is, if it's gray, we have uh, red. We have uh, some lines between the topics, but uh, the topics are with the same color. So you need to improve this slide to present it in a better way. For you to use this slide, I think it's okay. You, you can use it that way because I used to use this slide this way. But in order to present, you should make it simple. And if the investors want a better detail or a, uh, more details on the main information, then you can present this one, but not at the first okay. at the first meeting. Okay. Good. Good advice. Thank you. And then the acquisition. I'll get it down to down to ten slides. <laughs> then the exit slide I don't see it as exit strategy the way that you presented yes I just see as possibilities of exit and we can you can exit by acquisition by institutional investment or an IPO going forward it's um, it's not enough. You need to present real possibilities here. Uh, another slide that we 
was the revenue model, I think, the, the financial. What's the, the revenue that you're going to project? Uh, I didn't like the way that you presented that. Why? Because it doesn't bring how you're going to achieve that. Because paper yeah. accepts everything. So now you're going to you're gonna have in 19 zero dollars and then you're gonna reach 90 million in five years how the strategy and the flow of the presentation is not leading for you to explain how you're gonna do that so for me seeing your slide and your presentation the first thing that I would imagine is it's impossible, it's just numbers in a paper. I can't see how it's going to work and how it would be possible. Mm -hmm. What I would suggest to you in this slide is instead of a line, use a column column chart and the column you know the, the, the slide that we have a column and in each column we have parts of uh, that compose the column yeah the breakdown of the expenses versus revenue probably yeah, is that what you're suggesting that, I would use your marketing strategy to build up the revenue so in 2019 we have nothing in 2020 we will have uh, five thousand dollars coming from seo strategy and then inbound marketing and then partnerships it will make, okay, okay. It will make me believe more in our numbers then only look at this slide starting with a zero and reaching 85 million in five years good suggestion there thank you very much i appreciate that it'll look a lot nicer Tim, I unbelievable think that's it. i think we go through all the slides you have appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Augusto. I really appreciate your time to, to sit down with me and go through all of this. <laughs> do you think how do you think my advices would help you? Oh, it's help, it's gonna help enormously. I've got I've got actionable advice that I can, you know, go forward and make these changes. Um, and you know, it's gonna look a lot better. And hopefully I get a little bit more uh, reception from uh, from some of the other seed investors that I've been approaching. Yeah, I hope you, you can improve your pitch, improve your business, think better on exactly. the strategies behind it. Exactly. I mean, your, 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 the points you've raised, you know, I'm sure, uh, you know, points that a lots of other investors are looking at going, oh, and that's the reason why they, they're, they're probably hesitating. So no, I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I'd be really keen to, to learn more about what you're doing with uh, with big data and divorces as well. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. I'll, I'll send you up a, a follow-up email um, probably tomorrow or the next day. Sure. Um, you, have a, you have a great rest of your, your afternoon. I appreciate your time. Thank you. You too, Tim. Nice talking to you, Augusta. See you later. See you. Bye-bye.